If you ever try to get your savings in order, chances are you failed a lot. But the truth is, it's not your fault. You just didn't have the right strategies. So here are six proven ways to save $10,000 faster, according to science. First, there's guideline automation. A 2004 research study found there's a way to easily save 3.8 times more money. But the best part is you can still buy things you love. Pineapple pizza, Mr. Magic Lamps, and broccoli. But you gotta do it in a specific way. Implementing guideline automation does take a bit of work to get started, but it saves so much more time and headache in the long run. This strategy plays on the idea of loss aversion. Basically, it's when you losing $100 feels significantly worse than you finding $100. Naturally, anything you do that takes away from your immediate pile of money, like saving money, will become just a bit harder. For me, guideline automation makes it so I never have to worry about saving money. It completely eliminates any form of loss aversion. But before I show you how my flow is set up, let's say you earn $67,000 a year. If you apply guideline automation to just 10% of your income, you'd have saved close to $7,000 by the end of the year. Not bad considering you didn't have to lift a finger after setting it up once. Think of it as sort of a self tax where your future self is charging you a 10% tax of all your earnings so that your future self can be financially free. Here's how I set mine up. Step one, my paychecks are deposited into my checking account. Step two, on the same payday, my bank account then automatically moves my paycheck into one of two accounts. One is called my spending account, which includes my fixed monthly bills, typical living expenses like groceries, gas, etc. And by knowing how much that I typically spend in a month based on historical averages, I can set up spending targets for other stuff like restaurants, entertainment, travel, and shopping. The second account is my savings account, basically where all my savings go. Step three, at the end of the month, I automatically know what I didn't use up in my spending account, and I can automatically move the leftover money into my savings account. Then the money from my savings account can do one of three things, be a part of my emergency fund, go into a high yield savings account, or go into my investment accounts. I also use this savings goal tracker to save money a lot faster. Basically, I'll just put in how much I want to save and then I can track my progress and visually see where I'm at. For a limited time, I'm giving away my ultimate savings goal tracker for free. Get it with the link below. Next, don't save $10,000. The problem with setting such a large goal from day one is that it's not realistic. Instead, I want you to think about how you'd eat 10,000 slices of pineapple pizza. If you don't believe in pineapple on pizza, I already know what your answer is. But the only right answer is one slice at a time. So just like the slices of pizza, break down that $10,000 goal. What you need to save every month is $833, which still sounds like a lot of money, but then you wanna keep on breaking it down. $10,000 in a year is just $27.39 a day. And when you break that down even more, it looked like this. Cooking meals instead of eating out, there's 10 to $15 a day. Bringing your own coffee instead of getting latte with oat milk, $5 a day. Cutting out subscriptions you don't use anymore, Netflix, GQ, Hulu, about 30 bucks a month. Taking public transportation instead of Uber, $50 a week. Playing Catan with friends instead of going to the bar, $100 a week. But there's just one more problem. There's a psychological phenomenon called present bias. Basically, people tend to put more value and priority on immediate rewards over future benefits. Now, thankfully, there is an easy way to get around this. Instead of thinking you're only saving $27.39 every day, you gotta switch it back around. Think about it as you're saving $10,000 at the end of the year. By doing this Jedi mind tricks and switching your mindset into the bigger number when you need it, you become more conditioned to fight off present bias. Suddenly, saving $27.39 a day seems pretty doable. And by the end of the year, you're gonna have $10,000 saved up. All for making a few little decisions that the person next to you didn't. Next, taking back control of your emotional bank. Companies like Amazon, Coca-Cola, and Nike invest billions of dollars to try and figure you out. They hire teams of psychologists, behavioral economists, and marketing experts to understand how your emotional bank works, what gets you to tick, why you crave things, and how to convince you to click buy. But what if instead of letting multi-billion dollar companies exploit and manipulate our emotional banks for the worse, what if we were able to do the same thing to it 
but for the better. A 2019 research study found that you were 3.3 times more likely to save if you were able to use your emotional advantage to fine tune your behavior. And it all starts with a single question. But what surprised me the most from this study is that you don't need to obsess over all the data, the statistics, and information about the benefits of saving. For most people, it doesn't really help to constantly hear about how unprepared some families are for emergencies or how baby boomers are struggling to financially retire. The truth is, none of this is as effective as asking yourself this one question. Why? For me, my why is my parents. My parents left their friends, their entire family, and everything they knew to come to the US. They worked in factories every single day from morning to evening to give their future children a better life. When they got paid, they didn't use the money to buy new clothes for themselves or designer bags or anything lavish. Instead, they decided to tuck most of it away in hopes to give their future children a better financial start. When I was born, I never grew up with much money. In fact, I grew up witnessing all the little things that my parents did to save. I remember how we would get these little coupons in the mail and my mom would clip them out one by one. How instead of Nikes and Jordans, we had to get brandless shoes from Payless. Or how we intentionally bought clothes that were way too big for me because my mom said that I would still be able to wear it when I got older. My why is to be able to give my parents a life they never had. A life where they never have to worry about money. That's why I have pictures of my family throughout my apartment, to constantly remind myself why I'm doing what I'm doing and to always hold me accountable and motivated to keep on pushing. Author Simon Sinek calls this the golden circle. Basically, it's a model that explains how some people achieve success while others don't. It consists of three concentric circles representing three different layers. Sinek says it's not enough to know how to save money or what you can do to save money. These things are important, but they come secondary after you have a genuine answer to why you want to save money. Your why creates a sentimental connection between your core values and why you want to save. It builds a personal reason to save, not just because you should or are told to, but because you have a deeper meaning to achieve. And speaking of deeper meaning, I've come to realize that when you grow up without money, you tend to build up a lot of financial baggage and trauma that negatively impacts you later in life. What I think is really helpful is therapy, which can give you the strategies to work through this. That's why I'm excited to talk about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and accessible. Finding a therapist can be tough, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote. And by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. Check out the link below. It's betterhelp.com slash Vincent Chan. Clicking that link supports the channel, but more importantly, gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, if you don't really fit with that therapist, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost, without stressing about insurance or who's in your network. If you ever went through or are going through a hard time, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash Vincent Chan. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting this video. Oscar Wilde said, I can resist everything except temptation. I personally have a super addicting personality. All the way since middle school, I've been obsessed with video games. Left 4 Dead, Team Fortress 2, Age of Mythology. In fact, my biggest brag is that I finished a main quest in Skyrim in just two days. In psychology, they call this gratification. Most people tend to give into their impulses because of dopamine. Basically, it's the pleasure chemical in our brains that gets released when we give in. But the problem is, we're all misunderstanding the timing and sequence which dopamine affects us. Typically, we think the dopamine process goes like this. You wanna buy Mr. Magic Lamp, you buy it, you get a huge hit of dopamine. But did you ever notice that after you buy something you've wanted for a while, you sort of forget about it? That positive feeling stops existing. But studies found that the dopamine process actually goes like this. You wanna buy a Mr. Magic Lamp, you get a hit of dopamine anticipating the purchase, and then you buy it. And companies know all about this order. 
They spent billions of dollars to exploit this deep-seated weakness of ours. They use tricks like the classic on sale signs where they make you feel like you're actually saving money or setting up thresholds making you spend $100 more just so you can save $5 on shipping. But how do you stop falling for this? Author Baumeister knows a thing or two about this. Baumeister and his colleagues study people who are obsessed with chocolate cake. But instead of giving the participants the cake right away, they were told they could have it later. And it worked. Their urge to eat the cake significantly subsided. The trick is, instead of stating that you'll never make an unnecessary purchase again, which is an unrealistic goal, give yourself permission to get that dopamine hit by creating a not now, but later list. Whenever I see something that I really wanna buy, I add it to my not now, but later list. I let my dopamine get its fill, and then I wait 30 days before I buy it. If by the end of the 30 days, I still wanna buy the thing, then I'll get it. But what happens about 92.7% of the time is that after an item has been on the list for two weeks, I realize that I actually didn't want it in the first place, and it was just an impulse decision. For me, what changed my financial life is understanding the future value formula. Basically, this helped me determine how much my money is worth in the future without needing to become a time traveler. Here's how you can easily think about it. If I said I can give you $100 today or $100 next year, which would you rather have? Chances are you'd want the $100 right now because you can actually do something with it today. Buying 50 cheeseburgers, a nice Casio watch, or Mr. Magic Lamp instead of waiting a year to do it. Naturally, we'd say that $100 today is worth more than $100 next week, which is worth more than $100 next year. That's the basic idea of the future value of money. But if $100 next year is worth less than $100 today, how much less is it worth? And this is where it gets really interesting. If I asked whether you wanted $100 today or $105 in a year, you might have to think about it. And that's where this formula really shines. By being able to understand the future value of something, you can make better financial decisions based on your future needs. If you can invest $100 into something that generates a 10% return annually, then you should take the $100 now because the future value of the $100 in a year is $110. But if you don't expect to make more than $105 or be able to invest your $100 in something that generates more than 5% return in a year, then you'd be better off accepting the $105 in a year since the $105 will be more than the present value of $100. Start thinking about the present value of money like this. However much money you save today, if you put it into the S&P 500 index fund, how much would it be worth in, let's say 15 years, assuming a 10% annualized average return? Let's say instead of buying this Mr. Magic Lamp for $5,000 and instead actually put that money into the S&P 500 for 10 years, then the future value of today's $5,000 is almost 13,000. But if I invested it for 20 years, let's say, then I'll be worth over $33,000. So the question is now, is this Mr. Magic Lamp worth the future value of $33,000? Next, most people think that savings is your income minus expenses, but that's wrong. Author Morgan Housel believes that savings is equal to your income minus your ego. Look around your room. Are there any items you bought on impulse because you wanted to one-up a friend or family member? Did you buy a new TV or a new car because your friend David just got a new one too? Housel believes that spending beyond the minimum need of materialism is mostly just a reflection of ego, a way to show people that you have or had money, meaning the quickest way to increase your savings isn't about raising your income, but rather raising your humility. You can spend less if you desire less, and you will desire less if you care less about what others think of you. And that leads me to something you've got to start accepting. And it's that even if you're trying your absolute hardest to save, sometimes you still might feel like you're not saving enough. And that might be because you aren't doing these things immediately after you get paid. Click here for the eight things you need to start doing with your paycheck today.